Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is implement two stacks in an array and it is an easy level problem. So this problem is very simple and straightforward and it says that we have to implement two stacks in one array efficiently and we need to implement four methods. First method is push one which pushes an element in the first stack. The second element is push two which pushes an element to the second stack and then pop1 and pop2 respectively to pop the elements from the stack and if that particular stack is empty we have to return minus 1 right so this is uh, just implementing stacks through arrays and if you have actually studied detectors and algorithms so if you have studied it from the core then you must have already done this exercise many times because uh, like there are many exercises in that we have to implement stacks using linked list as well as uh, arrays right so I'll tell you like uh, how we can solve this problem if you're not already familiar with this method and uh, the expected time in space complexity is O of 1 only right so let us see how we can do this so uh, they have initially given us some values so they are giving us the size of the array to be 100 right and one more thing that they have mentioned is that at any instance of time the total number of elements in the both of the arrays let's say a and b will always be less than or equal to 100 so we don't need to worry about running out of space right now they have initialized two values you will see this in the boilerplate code they have initialized one value with minus one which is the low value and the other high value with n or the size of the array right in this case it is 100 so what you need to do is whenever you are pushing into the uh, array so we, we can just create an array of smaller size to see an example Let's say instead of 100, we have 10. Right, so this is an array of size 10. Now, top 1, top 1 is initially at this particular position, at this particular position, and top 2 is initially at the last position, and both of these are outer bounds of the array. Now, whenever you insert an element, what you can essentially do is Let's say you are inserting in, in the array 1, you can increment your value of top 1 and then put your element here. Similarly, and when you again want to insert some element, you can increment your value of top 1 and then insert the element here. Now, if you want to insert an element or push an element into the second stack, what you can do is, you can decrement your value of top 2 and insert an element here. Similarly, you can again decrement your value of top 2 and insert your element here. Right? This way, you will be able to insert all the elements. Now, one more thing that they could have done is, they could have asked you about the size of the array, right? So, in this case, you will see that if the top one is at index one, the size is always two, right? So, the size of the array one is going to be top one plus one, right? Similarly, they could have done for array two as well. So, this is n minus one, this is n minus two. So, whenever you are at n minus two position, that means you have two elements in your array. So you can write it in a formula and that value will be n minus top 2, right? So this is how you can calculate your size of both arrays. Now the third operation that they mentioned was uh, popping the elements from the array. Now for that this particular operation, for example, if for top 1, you are at a value greater than minus 1 because minus 1, minus 1 denotes that your first array is actually empty. Similarly, top 2, when top 2 value is equal to n, this denotes that your second array is actually empty. So, if, if they do not match these values respectively, so for top 1 what I can do is, I can just move the pointer one step to the back, right, or decrement the pointer of top 1. Now, I don't need to worry about this particular element because uh, I don't need to update it. Anyways, my top 1 is at this particular position now. So, whenever in any new element is added, my top one will again come here and this will be overwritten or if top two comes here top two comes here this will be overwritten by top two i don't need to worry about uh, like uh, removing that element from here i can just decrement my pointer of top similarly if i want to remove an element from the stack two i can just make sure that it is not equal to n and if it is not equal to n i can just increment the value of top two and move it one space to the right right so this is how you can perform all the operations and i have also told you how you can how they could have like asked about the size and if they asked then you could have done with this particular method 
so that was all about this particular question now let me just show you the code and uh, this code was already written this part and i just wrote this one line functions and uh, that's it for this particular uh, like problem because this is very simple right so what you can do is you can you could have like uh, written it in two different lines but you can also write it simply like uh, array of top one is equals to x right now you want to increment before uh, using the value of top one so i can use pre increment right similarly for top two i want to decrement before using the value of top two so that is why i use pre decrement now when i am removing the values if top one is greater than minus one this is a very basic condition what i can do is here i need the value of top one before decrementing it so i use array of top one and with post decrement right similarly if top two is less than 100 means i can take the value and i use the value of top 2 before incrementing it so that is why array of top 2 with post post increment right and both the cases if this is not satisfied minus 1 will be returned automatically so let me just submit this and show you that this particular code works and this approach is absolutely correct so you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement in this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and you'll be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. Share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding. Stay safe. Bye-bye.